Hello European history class. Today I'm going to take you on a story told in the pictures of the great life of Leonardo da Vinci. So let's get started. Leonardo, shown here, was known as Leonardo da Ser Piero da Vinci, or simply known as Leonardo da Vinci, was an Italian Renaissance polymath. Uh, he was a genius, perhaps more than any other figure, renowned and known as the Renaissance humanist ideal. The following digital story will depict his childhood in education, time in Virginia's workshop, professional life, old age, personal life, then go over a span of paintings and drawings from the 1480s and 1500s, then wrapping up with his observations and inventions, and ultimately with his death as well. The picture shown here is Leonardo's childhood home in Anciano. Leonardo was born on April 15, 1452 in the Tuscan hill town of Vinci in the valley of the Arno River. He was an out-of-lock, wedlock son of the wealthy Messer Piero Frusso and Caterina, a peasant. Little is known about Leonardo's life. He spent his first five years in Hamlet of the Anciano in the home of his mother. Then, from 1457, he lived in the household of his father, grandparents, and uncle Francesco in the small town of Vinci. Leonardo received an informal education in Latin, geometry, and mathematics. The picture shown here is called The Baptism of Christ by Virchiana and Leonardo. In 1466, at the age of 14, Leonardo was apprenticed to the artist Virginio whose workshop was one of the finest in Florence. Leonardo would have been exposed to both theoretical training and a vast range of technical skills. Leonardo collaborated with Verrocino on his baptism of Christ, painting the young angel holding Jesus' robe in a manner that was far superior to his masters that Verrocino put down his brush and never painted again. Verrocino was said to have made Leonardo his model for two works, the bronze statue of David in the Bargello and the archangel Archangel Raphael and Tobias and the Angel. The picture shown here is Leonardo's earliest work. It's called the Arno Valley. It was a drawing in pen and ink drawn on August 5th, 1473. In 1478, he left Verrocino's studio. One writer claims that in 1480, he was living with the Medici and working in the Garden of the Piazza San Marco in Florence. In January 1478, he received his first two independent commissions to paint an altarpiece for the Chapel of St. Bernard and in March 1481, the Adoration of the Magi for the monks of San Gennaro. That is the picture shown here. Neither commission was completed, the second being interrupted when Leonardo went to Milan. His most famous works included The Virgin on the Rocks, The Last Supper, and The Mona Lisa. Leonardo worked in Milan from 1482 until 1499. He was commissioned to paint The Virgin on the Rocks for the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception and The Last Supper for the Monastery of Santa Maria de Grazzi. That is The Virgin on the Rocks. This picture that comes up next is more well known as The Last Supper. The painting represents the last meal shared by Jesus with his disciples before his capture and death. It shows specifically the moment when Jesus has just said, One of you will betray me. Leonardo tells the story of the consternation that his statement has caused to the twelve followers of Jesus. Among the works created by Leonardo in the 16th century is a small portrait known as the Mona Lisa. In the present era, it is arguably the most famous painting in the world. Its fame rests in particular on the elusive smile on the woman's face. Its mysterious quality brought perhaps by the fact that the artist has subtly shadowed the corners of the mouth and eyes so that the exact nature of the smile cannot be determined. Vasari, who is generally thought to have known the painting only by repute, said that the smile was so pleasing that it seemed divine rather than human, and those who saw it were amazed to find that it was alive as the original. Within Leonardo's lifetime, his extraordinary powers attracted the curiosity of others. One such aspect of his life is in respect for evidence by his vegetarianism and his habit, according to Vasari, of purchasing caged birds and releasing them. Leonardo had many friends who are now renowned in either their fields or for their hysterical significance. They included such as the mathematician Luca Pacioli, as well as French newest Gaffurius and Isabella d'Este. Beyond friendship, Leonardo kept his private life secret. His sexuality has been the subject of satire and analysis and speculation. This trend began in the mid-16th century and was revived in the 19th and 20th centuries, most notably by Sigmund Freud. Leonardo da Vinci died at Clos Luce, shown here, on May 2nd, 1519. Vasari states that in his last days, Leonardo sent for a priest to make his confession and to receive the Holy Sacrament. In accordance to his will, 60 beggars followed his casket. 
He was buried in the chapel of St. Hubert in Chateau d'Ambroise. Some 20 years after Leonardo's death, Francis reported by the goldsmith and sculptor Bellevue saying, There had been never another man born into the world who knew as much as Leonardo. 